What's going on, y'all? And welcome on in. You know what time it is. It's patch preview day. And I actually want to break up this video into two parts. Okay, so two separate videos. The first one, let's cover the main attraction of the patch preview. The new content, I think, mainly is the new three-star heroes. There's a lot of them, and they're pretty cool. We'll focus on that, as well as many any other kind of side things I want to tell y'all about, like maybe the new pack uh, that's coming out. But in the second video... So make sure y'all watch both. I really want to talk about the two characters at this table. So the first one being Cerise, who is the limited unit that's going to be rerun. And we'll talk about her and Guiding Light in case you missed her or it's the first time you're seeing her. And then let's talk about Remnant Violet, who is probably one of the most uh, controversial Moonlight Fives in terms of how strong he is. I saw a lot of people asking for buffs, both on the live stream. I've seen them people ask for it in Reddit. A lot of people don't like him. And you might be surprised as to how I'm going to review and, you know, guide you on whether or not you should consider summoning him. Okay, so make sure you watch both parts. But let's go ahead and start with the new three-star units. So we got five, one of every element as per usual. And the first one we're going to look at is the Light Knight, Yoon Ryung. Make sure you guys in the comments, let me know which one are your favorites. And after we look at the skills, kind of maybe where you're thinking about using them. Okay. So health, self, imprint concentration. An officer from a noble family. Obviously, she looks really good, guys. Definitely waifu. So the skill three battle cry, uh, two turn immunity and increased speed. Soul burn increases the effect duration by one turn. Pretty strong skill three. Speed's always good. Immunity's pretty good. But if she's gonna be a PVE hero, let's see what else she gives. Skill two, assault coordination, barrier with combat readiness. Increased proportion to the target's max health. Skill 1. This is how she got the extra attack here. So we have a... Let me pause real fast, guys. We have a 75... Yeah, 75% chance to defense break for one turn, which is okay. One turn defense break, not always the best. Um, but defense break period is good. And the fact that she can lead into another extra attack after defense break is kind of nice. Now the restrict, though. Um, I do expect her to be mostly a PvE hero, and Restrict, in my opinion, the only place I've really seen it used, guys, is on, like, Banshee, to save yourself, or to get yourself an extra turn if you're not doing, like, the Banshee one-shot. Have y'all found any other uses for Restrict in PvE? Maybe she'll have some PvE, PvP applications here, but usually the track record for these three stars is they're not super meta for PvP, at least. But, let me know what y'all think about Yoon Ryung, the Light Knight. She looks great. I don't know where I'm going to use her, though, if I if I were to somehow pull her through Galaxy Summons or random Covenant Summons. Animations look good, though. And that extra attack from the defense break is pretty nice. Just the Restrict, so he has a lot of buffs. All right, next up, guys, we got Hasol. Looks-wise, I think this is my favorite. The voice, though? I'm not sure how I feel about the voice on her. <laughs> But yeah, she looks like Falcon or Clary. Looks like I think she's my favorite. So health imprint concentration too. And this she's also a knight, a dark knight. Let's see what she does, guys. So skill two, Blade of Vengeance is the passive. After the enemy counterattacks. So we have some counter counterattack. Increases combat readiness of the caster by 20%. Up to I think that's what? Three, four, five, six, seven, up to 30%. And then increases the fixed damage of Swift Cut, which I believe will be her skill one. We'll find out here in a second. By a thousand. So once she, so we want to bring her against units that counterattack, and the fixed damage increase effect can stack up to four times. So up to four thousand. Interesting. So she takes a lot of counter hits, and then she'll hit a really strong fixed damage skill one. Let me we'll double check, guys, if if uh, that's the skill one. But think of Rimuru, who also has fixed damage. It's kind of like that, or the new fairy tale artifact that got buffed, also does fixed damage. It will always be the same static amount. Yeah, but four times stacking is kind of interesting. So punishing strike. So it is a skill one. So this is skill three. Tax all enemies with a secret skill. Uh, increases defense of allies for three turns. Three turn defense up, guys, is very nice. And then speed of the caster of three turns. Pretty cool, too. So we want to bring her. I think a lot of people, if you fight a lot of rems, a lot of uh, violets. So kind of similar to Pillis, we want to bring her against units that counter. We give a big defense up, and then we just stack that flat damage or that fixed damage where even if it misses, um, she'll do some good damage. So we don't need to build her necessarily with damage. I kind of like this unit, um, depending if you have Pillis built or not already. But yeah, as you can see there, they're using it versus a unit that can counter. So she's going to be stacking up that Vengeance for the extra fixed damage. 
All right, guys, so this one has some extra, it has like some lifesteal, health recovery, and then additionally inflicts 500 fixed damage regardless of attack, of whether this attack hits or not. And if you take those counters from the skill 2 passive, right, we can get up to 4,500 fixed damage slamming into a skill 1. Kind of cool. Um, overall, though, the fact that she's a dark knight, she's going to compete with Pillis. And I think since Pillis has so much more to her kit as well, I kind of don't really see too much of a reason to use Hustle instead, unless you just really like her for looks, which she does look great. But the guaranteed defense up, that's three turns. And the fact that maybe she has self-speed up could be an all a viable alternative. Let me know what y'all think. I don't know if we really need another anti-counter unit, but maybe some of y'all really, really need extra help versus like Rem. Alright guys, so we have the Ice Thief next. I think he's a thief. We'll double check here in a second. Mui! Yes, Ice Thief. Alright, let's see what he does, guys. He looks really cool. What brought you here? Sounds very Husbando-like. Alright guys, Imperial Concentration is an effectiveness, which is interesting. That's actually really nice as a... As an Imperial Concentration. Because you're going to get a lot of copies. Alright, so skill 3, Wind Cutter. 75% chance of defense break for 2 turns AoE and self attack up. Very strong skill 3 for a 3 star. Soul burn 10 souls, extra damage dealt. Always nice. Okay. Good start so far, guys. Skill 2, let's pause because it's kind of long. Cold hearted management. After the foremost ally, so the front unit is attacked. Counter attacks with a blade flurry, which decreases attack for 2 turns. And when all allies are ice elemental heroes, okay, I'm never a fan, guys, too much of the mono stuff, but that does kind of shoehorn him into some PvE, so maybe we want to bring him in with an ice squad against, like, the fire boss, the fire expedition, or if, like, remember, guys, the last advent was a fire boss, too, we could use, like, a mono ice team, but we don't necessarily have to use it, but that does kind of indicate we want to bring him in a mono ice team. He'll increase the combat race of allies by 10% whenever he does his blade flare, which is... Definitely a nice bonus. So it takes priority over a counterattack. It can only happen once every two turns. Honestly, guys, with the only combat rest by 10%, I mean, it's just a bonus. We don't have to use him in a mono ice team. All right, so let's finish. Let him finish talking. So the foremost unit gets attacked. Counterattack of the Blade Flurry. And it is single target attack down as well. All right. Skill one has a bleed. And, uh, that's about it. 50% chance to bleed. Kind of another interesting unit. I don't know where I would use him, though, guys. I'm thinking fire. Maybe the defense break is always nice. Fire expo. All right, or, guys, next, the female Suin. And her model, guys, she looks super tall. What do y'all think, chat? Or not chat, YouTube. What do y'all think, guys? Sorry, I'm used to talking to my Twitch chat. But looks wise, y'all a fan of Ort. So flat attack, self imprint. Oh, and guys, let me look at the stats again real fast. I think she's the most interesting of the three stars because she's a thief with high base speed. So if you're missing speed contesters, Ort is an interesting one. And I think y'all should look at picking her up, okay? Very, very high base speed. Not quite as fast as someone like Assassin Sid, but fast enough where if you're lacking another speed contester, you really want to look at her. Plus her kit, we'll see in a second. Is actually really nice. So, overflowing enthusiasm, guys. The skill 2 passive. When the caster is at max health at the start of the turn, grants perception to the caster for one turn, which gives 15% crit chance and 15% crit damage. After attacking, if the caster has perception, which she should have if she starts the turn at max health, whereas if she is the fastest unit or one of the fastest units, she should be fat max health. Um, as long as they're not a boss or elite monster, so PvP usage increases the attack of the caster for one turn, so that's very nice. Self attack up and also gives an extra attack, which can only happen every two turns. That's really, really strong, guys. Uh, very, very strong skill to passive if you combine that with her high base speed. Extra attack, self attack up, plus 15% crit chance, 50% crit damage. Very, very nice skill, too, for a three star unit. Let's look at it. So she hits and then she grants, she. Procs that self attack up, extra attack there. Skill three, guys. This one is crazy. No mercy for the weak. Attacks the enemy with a swift sword storm. With has a it has a base thirty percent defense penetration. Right, that can scale up to seventy percent depending on how fast you are compared to the target you're attacking. So if you're attacking a knight or let's say unit that has very low speed, you can rack that up to seventy percent defense pen, which is crazy. 
This is awesome for a three-star unit that is designed to build fast. So the Soul Burn is decreases skill cooldown by two turns, which um is okay, I guess. Means we can cycle back to it, but with a six-turn starting base, I don't expect this to be used too often. Typically, we'll probably just try to snipe out a unit with their high base speed. And the fact that we have self-attack up, up to 70% defense pen, and we can attack twice. Super, super strong. Last but not least, the skill one. Guys, this is very typical. Nothing to write home about. Scales with um speed. So I think Ort so far, guys, to me, has the most potential, at least for PvP, of course. All right, last but not least, guys, we have the Fire Warrior Januta. He looks awesome. I like, I like characters like this. He looks cool. All right, guys, so crit chance imprint. This is the best imprint concentration out of all the units we've seen so far. Um... And obviously, guys, he's probably going to be a bruiser. I did see his preview earlier. I didn't pay too much attention, though. So he is a fighting spirit unit. Uh, skill 3 attacks enemy, decreasing speed for 2 turns before increasing attack of the caster for 2 turns. When the caster is enraged, so I'm assuming something's going to give him enraged, he can ignore effect resist. Very similar to, like, um, I think it's Fire Ken, right, guys? I haven't used Ken in forever, but I believe he also has some enraged mechanics or fighting spirit mechanics, as well as ignore effect resist, you know, during certain... Uh, Prerequisites. Soul Burn effect is increased damage dealt. Alright, degree speed is always good. Self attack up always. I think almost all the units today, guys, have self attack up. Kind of crazy. And he does have rage buff there. So, yes, the skill 2 is to say here. Uh, Hour of the Hunt. Yes, yeah, so this gives him rage, guys, as well as increases speed of all allies. Rage, I think, gives attack plus speed. So, I think that'll scale with his increased speed as well. A lot of buffs from these units. So after an ally is attacked, the caster gains 10 fighting spirit per ally attack. So we bring him versus AoE. And then 25% guys, 30% uh, after molas or skill enhancements, not molas, excuse me, stigma, uh, is a decently high chance if we bring him against units that hit multiple targets, right? This will have a high chance to proc. And even if it doesn't, think of it kind of similar to uh, counter set or a 10% higher Elbrus if another unit is hit. Uh, how are the Hour of the Hunt, two turns, Enraged or Rage Mechanic plus Increased Speed of All Allies for two turns. Really, really cool. I'm not the biggest fan of Fighting Spirit type units, guys. Um, unless they're like super busted. But overall, Speed Down, Speed Up for his squad, plus Rage Mechanic, Self Attack Up. Could be a cool bruiser. He also has the best looking sprite in my opinion, guys. Alright, so Rabbit Strike. When the caster is in rage, which he gets from skill 2, damage dealt is increased. Alright, so a pretty cool bruiser. But unless he gets a specialty change, I don't expect him to, you know, as a 3-star, shake the meta too much. Alright guys, I think that's about it for the 3-star heroes. Let me know what y'all think about them. Uh, my main pick, I think, my favorite is, the, is Ort. I think with her high base speed plus the double hit with the self attack up and the scaling defense pen, I think that's actually really, really crazy. And I think she'll see the most overall impact, which is surprising because usually the light and dark units kind of take the cake. Um, and that would be Yunryung and Hassel from this time around. But let me know which one are y'all y'all's favorites. And as we get as we get closer to the release or as we pull them, I'll uh, you know test each one which seems to have the most potential. But very cool looking units. I think all of them look great. Um, we'll see how they turn out, guys. Five brand new units coming in episode three. All right, guys, since the video went on so long, I'm not going to check out too much other stuff, but I did want to show you all this real fast. Remember, guys, if you haven't seen one of my other videos I'm on spending an E7, never feel pressure to spend. However, this is one of the craziest packs, um, and it's coming back, and I think they said they want this to return once every year, so the first weekend of every year. Or week we get the star dash which i think they ran it at 10 us dollars guys and it grants you a five star hero and a five star artifact as well as 10 summons so guys for you get 10 summons which can, which can also happen to have five stars in them as well as getting a five star artifact and a five star hero but it is limited to episode one so very, very nice pack, guys. Never feel pressure to spend, but if you did want to spend or support Smilegate or spend 10 bucks here and there, I believe it's $10. This is probably one of the highest value packs, if not the highest value pack, uh, to exist in E7. All right, guys. Let's wrap it up there. Uh, make sure you all stay tuned and watch the next video on Remnant Violet and Cerise. Catch y'all in a minute.